respective places. This is a continuation of our course on uh, devotion and reverence. Amen. On devotion and reverence. Tonight we're going to talk a lot about praise. Uh, and I'm going to use seven forms of praise. These are things that we do but we may or may not associate a name to it or a type to it. It's just kind of what happens. But but it's uh, relevant for us to know this is what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. So this is going to be very uh, uh, conversational. I'm going to ask you to participate. I'm going to ask you to demonstrate. And I'm going to ask you to do a little even on-the-site research. So keep your research devices handy or your working knowledge of the Bible handy so that we can do all of those things. All right? Amen, Pastor Ken. Our scripture reference for today, if we get into the, the meat of it, is Psalm 100, the 100th Psalm. Many of you are familiar with it, but just so you have that reference. But we're uh, speaking of forms of praise. And these words that I'm giving you are the, uh, I believe it's Hebrew, or it might be Greek, or whatever it is, it's going to be that word, but I'm going to use the English words. Is that fair enough? Yeah. So if y'all allow me to not be real deep, I'll use the English words uh, to describe what we're doing. All right? So the first form of praise, the first form of praise is a sacrifice of praise. Write that down. A sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise is foundational to all other forms of praise. It's, it is a heart of faith praise given at a cost or a sacrifice. It's expressed by the raising of a hand or a physical declaration that you believe and glorify God when you can't even see and feel it. So, so when we're talking about a sacrifice of praise, it, it is coming from your youth, as Tolkien would say. It's coming from your youth. And as it's coming from your youth, it might actually include a sacrifice. It might actually include a sacrifice. When you hear us say that we offer God a a praise and it went up to him as a sweet smelling savor. Why, why, why are we saying that? What, what is that speaking to in reference to what we're saying right now? I'm trying to ask it without giving it away. Because it's a sacrifice. That's what they see it. It's a sacrifice and so what? That's what they see when they sacrifice animals and stuff too that it went up to him as a sweet Yes, and, and so what the animals just floated up to God. The smoke. The smoke. The smoke. The smoke. The smoke. Because when they did a sacrifice, it was what kind of an offering? A sacrificial offering. And what did they do to the offering? Burn. That's what I'm going with. They burned the offering, right? And, and so the, the aroma that, that Sister Cannon smelled when she came in <laughs> knew that it had been a sacrifice. Oh, Amen. 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 And so she, she smelled the result of my prayer. Yeah, right. Amen. She smelled the result of my praise. If if my praise didn't have a good flavor or a good aroma, it would not have been pleasing to her. But it's evident that the praise was good because the smell was good. All right, man. Amen. Amen. So in order for God to receive this sacrifice of praise. What's the first thing that has to happen? You all already kind of said it. What's happening? With the animals? Sacrifice. The animals have to be sacrificed. Right. You just run out in the street and find your possum no. and grab it and throw it up on a barbecue grill and say, God bless for you. Uh, uh, Amen. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God. That's not how it works? No. What, what happened? What happens when, when we have a sacrifice? It's got to be a certain type of animal. That's, that's, a, that's on the board. It's got to be without blemish. 
It's got to be without blemish. Right. That's on the board. Give me something else about these animals. It was sacrifice. Sometimes it, had, it made a difference whether it was a male or female, I think. It had to be male. Male or female, you might distinguish, but, but what about the male or female would make it specific? Because any male or female won't do it. First one. Uh, okay, it's been perfect. Without blemish, you got that one. Yeah. First one, I'm not sure, but it was a little considered. It was young. Young. Oh, it, uh, it, it was chosen. That's a, that's, a, that's a good one. What else? Pure. Now that's kind of what maybe is saying on the vote blemish. And, and what else? We, it, had, it had to have some value, which all these things gave it value. Right? And, and the other thing is it had to be living. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It had to be living. Yeah. You, you, you couldn't exactly. forget roadkill. Say this, I'm just gonna sacrifice this. Right, you know what I'm saying? It had to be living. So, so all of these things added value to the animal that we were gonna sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The greater the value, the greater the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The greater the value, the greater the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If if uh, if you had thirty sheep, and you got this one sheep over here that's got a broke leg that's probably going to die tomorrow. Yeah. And you said, let's go ahead and use him and get rid of him. Yeah. It, it, it would have been a sacrifice, but it wouldn't have been a good or a pure right. sacrifice right. because it didn't have value. Right. You knew it was going to die anyway. Right. But if you get the strongest, the youngest, the most pure, without spots, without blemish, you could probably take this sheep and shear it and make a lot of money off of its coat. But rather than make money off the coat, you kill it. Mm. Rather, than, rather than, than use it to breed, you kill it. Mm. Rather than all the things that it could be, all the things that could be special to it, you take that and you say, God, this is the best thing that I have. And rather than keep it, I want to give it to you. That was something you just said. Uh, right, yeah. and, and, and that's what makes it a sacrifice. Okay? Our praise, we have associated the sacrifice of praise to the clapping and the singing and the dancing. And we're saying we're offering God a sacrifice of praise. But that didn't cost us anything. So although you're praising God with the clap and you're praising God with the song, what was the sacrifice? I said, although you're praising God with the clap and you're praising him with the song, there was no sacrifice. There is a sacrifice. Or else there's, there's not a sacrifice of praise. Assuming that we're offering a sacrifice of praise, what is the sacrifice? In order for it to be a sacrifice, what's the number one thing that has to happen? Something has to die. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's dying? Say it again, brother. You are the sacrifice. You are the sacrifice. And, and when you make that sacrificial praise, mm -hmm. it is literally you dying to self. Which means that in this form of praise, there's something that's trying to struggle to live in you that you're saying, I give it to God. I ain't going to even wrestle with it. I'm not going to even struggle with it. Rather than have it, I give it to God. Uh, and, and that's the sacrifice. It's, it's, it's what's precious, just like the lamb. It's what's precious to you. Maybe it's your time. It's precious to you. Maybe it's your money. It's precious to you. Maybe it's your uh, uh, fun time or, or whatever else, in your recreation. It's precious to you. Your service is precious to you. And in doing so, you glorify God. And you 
offer God praise in it. Yeah. And that's 
what's cooking. Right. And that's what's cooking. Mm -hmm. so, so when we get into the tangible, natural forms of praise, when we clap, but, I, but I'm tired. Mm -hmm. We clap, but I got a headache. We clap, but I'm hungry. We clap, but they've been clapping all day. And when we give God the clap, what we're saying is not the clap. That don't sound good. Well, well, when we clap for God, what we're saying is, you're still worth it. You're worth the energy. When we dance for God, we're saying, you're worth it. My feet hurt, but you're worth it. You see what I'm saying? When we, when we sing unto the Lord, whatever the expression that we're offering, especially out of a place of sacrifice, mm -hmm. where because I am tired, because I don't, but, but how I give it to God says, but you're worth it. I'm tired, but I'm doing this tired, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you all I got. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to do it. Because I really don't, I'm really not engaged. So the sacrifice of praise is what we offer to God. And we give him glory because of what it is and how we do it. Amen? Amen. So give me an example of where you give God a sacrifice of praise. Give it just a little bit louder, please. Well, I think when I was in Somebody was just saying. 
You see what I'm saying? It, it, it puts us, it, it, it's insane. Huh? I need to break that down. Break it down? Yeah, but somebody had learned how to say that. Yeah. Because I had a whole conversation with my sister yesterday about that. And she was asking me what that meant because that's what somebody told her. So, are we explaining the scripture or are we explaining that situation? Not that situation, the scripture, because we had a conversation about it. She was asking me to explain to her what that means because of her that they're not coming because of that scripture. Gotcha. So, Jesus was making a distinction when they when they came to him and said, I want to be a disciple. But, every, the, I think it was three examples there that they came and said, I want to be a disciple, but... And the distinction that he's making there is take the butt out. If you're going to be a disciple, then follow me. Don't follow me after you fit all of these conditions. Don't follow me after you get through doing all of that. This is not the distinction that we're making in that situation where we're mourning a loss or doing something like that. But if God's call is on your life and if God says go, don't say, well, God, I'll go, but first. You see what I'm saying? Uh, God, I'll do what you want me to do, but I got to make this the priority in my life. And he's, he's distinguishing Jesus is that don't make that the priority. Yes, question. Come on with it. It's not a question. It's just a confession. Because you have never had to do through what you miss before you do Which is exactly Jesus' point. See. You yeah. always have a something. Yeah, I always have a something. It'll be a funeral today. It'll be a bill tomorrow. Oh, it'll God. be you tired the next day. It'll be a garden. It'll be uh, your food. It'll be all of those different things. Yeah. And, and yeah. all he's making the distinction is set aside all the excuses. Right. Mm -hmm. Set aside all the distractions and follow me. Right. And, and the one man said, uh, I want to follow you. I keep all of the commandments. And all of that stuff, and he said, good, sell all you have and follow me. Why? Because that's the distraction. And that's, that's, the, that's the issue. Go ahead. And that was kind of what I what I shared. I just wanted to kind of make sure my understanding was around that because I think sometimes people take the scriptures and they take it out of context. Because to my understanding, since we had time, there was some type of burial process. Mm -hmm. So it's not a sin to bury people. No. To my understanding, it's just that that was the challenge for him, and God and Jesus knew, uh, or that was a test for him, not that Jesus didn't know what he was going to say, but to that person, like, hey, is it really that important to you? Do you really want to be a disciple? Exactly. And I also explained to them, yeah, I went to the hall. I just, right. Jesus, Jesus had a funeral. And that's what I even brought up, that Jesus yeah. was buried in a tomb, and right. back then, that was, <laughs> that was yeah, a burial he, process. He had a yeah. Yeah, he was, he was dressed was prepared for him, for burial, they did a whole funeral service for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So we can't say that Jesus is anti-human. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus is anti putting other stuff in front of him. And, and, and there's going to be times in your life, hopefully it's not in a, a, a situation like that where you're mourning the loss of a loved one, but there's going to be a place or a point in your life where you're going to have to say it. This God is more important than this. Yes. And it's going to be something that really is trying to compete. Yeah. It might be emotionally so. It might be uh, where you have to go and say, I know I want to be at this, but God is calling me to that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's hard to do. And there's going to be a place where you're going to have to make that distinction, that line in the sand. And that's the sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and, and we already know God is jealous. Amen. You know, and, and, and he do a lot, right? Yes. And so I think in some cases that these things are presented just so that we can make those distinctions. Yeah. So is that like when this happened and I said to myself, I'm going to be loud. I'm going to stay in my room. I'm going to shut up. Right. 
Yeah. It just made him cry. You know? Yeah. It's not going to do that. So I want to serve God with all the much circumstances. Lay here and cry, yeah. even though that's natural. Yeah. Lay here and cry doesn't give God any glory. Lay here and cry doesn't fulfill the call of God on my life. Lay here and cry doesn't encourage me. Lay here and cry doesn't encourage anybody else. Lay here and cry is not a sign of faith, hope, or charity. Lay here and cry is just me sitting here feeling pitiful and sorry for myself. And lay here and cry generally leads to other things that don't glorify God. So now I'm lay here and cry and drink. Now I'm going to lay here and cry and be depressed. Yes. Now I'm going to lay here and cry and cuss. Yes. Now I'm going to lay here and cry and I'll never go back to church. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I've gotten into a thing. Okay, y'all going to make me preach. Uh, you got to know that some <laughs> stuff that comes up in your life is there to throw you off. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's an assignment from the end, designed to check your chest. Mm -hmm. yes. it's, it's designed to see, if I do this, will you quit? Mm -hmm. okay. If I do this, can I break you down? Yeah. And and when you, you, the maturity is to get to a place to know that even if he slays me, yeah. you see, I, I can't let that run my day. I can't let what happened to, to me run my day. I'm going through some things right now. Most of you all that told me and talked to me today, you know, I ain't having a good one. You understand what I'm saying? But I want to say, I'm just going through, I'm staying home, I ain't going back to man. Man, please. Because this is a sacrifice. Look, the energy that I'm giving you right now is not matching what my heart is doing. But what, what my energy says is, God, you are worthy of my energy even when my heart is overwhelmed. All right, all right. You are worthy of my energy even when I hurt. Yes. You are worthy of my service no matter what I'm giving. Yes. And when we don't, what we're saying is the opposite. Mm -hmm. wow. we're, saying, we're saying what I'm going through is a bigger deal than you. What I lost is a bigger deal than you. And we don't intend to say that most of the time. That's not what we're trying to say. But if we're not conscious that that's what we're doing, then we'll find ourselves in that place. So sometimes you have to mechanically, I almost say medicinally, now I'm going to coin that word tonight. You heard it here first. Sometimes you got to give God medicinal praise. Cool. That's right. 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 I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right now. Oh, you got sometimes you gotta give God a medicinal, you know what a medicinal phrase on the bottom that say take two times daily. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like right. take this three times with food. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta do this. It doesn't matter if it tastes good, it doesn't matter if it feels good, it doesn't matter if you like taking pills. It doesn't matter if you don't want the shot. What you're going to do right now is you're going to do it. You're going to take them right now. I'm going to clap my hands even though my hands hurt. I'm going to dance even though my feet hurt because whatever I have to give God is worth it. God, I feel And the enemy is betting against you. Yes. He's betting if you let me do this, they'll curse you and they'll die. If you let if you let me touch their body, they'll curse you and die. If you let me get in their business, they'll curse you and they'll die. If you let me touch their children, they'll curse you and they'll die. If you let me touch their money, they'll curse you and die. Okay. And you have the nerve to say the Lord did it. Yeah. 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 I ain't shut about whatever I got, I got it because the Lord did it. Bless 
Yes. You gotta shake yourself out of it. Yes. I was talking to Greg, I was talking to Greg yesterday, he was at the hospital, we were talking about uh, uh, playing football. And he said when you play football, uh, no matter what it is, when you get ready to play football or we or we come off fighting, he said you gotta get fired up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You can't you can't just roll out the bed and say, nah, I, I, well, I'm gonna play football. And stumble out on the field. You got your amp. You know, you running around, you jumping, you, you beating your chest, you know what I'm saying? You doing push-ups and stuff, you beating on the shoulder pad, popping on the side of your head. Let's go! Huh? What's wrong? We getting ready to football! You see what I'm saying? You ain't gonna just wander out on the field scratching your head on the that's the time for the football game. You about to get hurt. Real. <laughs> yeah. 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 You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but but I, I have to consciously make a choice when I'm getting ready to play football to get my energy up, to get my lather up, to get fired up. Yeah. So I need to get fired up. By the time football games start back when I was young and I had energy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my lot of years of football, I was safe in every job of energy I had. I, I didn't breathe if I could help it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I wouldn't breathe when it was necessary. Amen. But, but back when I was young and I had energy, I was running, I sprinted out onto the field. Ah! Joker! Yeah. I'd be on the kickoff team, I'd scream at people as I was running out. Like a kamikaze or something. They'd ah! Yes! And don't let me hit somebody. Oh, 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 my mm. I, I, I probably have a little brain to come Y'all pray for me. That's okay. <laughs> you know? but, but I used to go into a game, and, and I, every day, every day I had a vision. Part of my pregame preparation was visualization. Well, that's a big two one. Yeah. Before the game started, we, we visualized ourselves winning. You know, we ain't, we ain't got our cleats on yet, but we see us. We just go somewhere and sit down and be quiet and imagine winning. And imagine scoring a winning touchdown. And imagine making that interception. And imagine making that game saving tackle. And you know, in my little mental health area where I went, in my corner of the a locker room, when I would go there, I would imagine that I hit somebody so hard. <laughs> I'm serious. Every game, I would go into the game and I say, I want to hit somebody so hard that they quit. <laughs> wow. oh my God. That's Listen, I, I don't want to get up right there on the field. And like, and like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was visualizing. They just take their elbow. I don't even want to play this game no more. Wow. And that's what I was envisioning. You know, not just making a tackle. Right. I don't want you to quit. Right. Wow. I'm going to take up golf. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's why I had a different mentality by the time the game started. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't just trying to make a tackle, I was trying to end your career. Oh, <laughs> my God. Wow. That's, the energy. That's the energy I brought to the football game. Huh? Remember that the Arkansas game, I told that boy, do not run this way. Yes. <laughs> do you understand that is a man over here? <laughs> I wasn't talking to him, I was talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that? That, that wasn't going to change what he was going to do. I was getting myself geeked. I'm like, if you run this way, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> That's what I was saying. The part of laughing at me, you know, it made you old. I said, okay. <laughs> I, I, got, I got an attitude talking because he didn't get nervous. I'm like, you should be nervous. Do you hear me talking to you? <laughs> and then and he didn't respond right. So I was like, okay, I got ready. And, and I got witnesses, some online. I, I, I got witnesses. And then they snapped that ball. I'm telling you, I brought everything I had in Missouri and put it into that boy in that backfield. I got everything that I was carrying, I put it into him. And I laid in the and I screamed. <laughs> no! It wasn't like, ah! It was the rule! <laughs> You know what I'm saying? From my soul, I screamed out. You know what I'm trying to say? My soul came out on him. No! You know what I'm saying? And, and when I did that to him, I got up and I felt like I conquered him. And I, you know, King Kong. And then I pointed at him and I said, I told you not to run this way. Now you better tell him don't run it like this way again. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. And, and, and he looked like he chuckled. You know what I'm saying? It offended me, Marquis. He chuckled when I said that. Like, oh, that's funny. You gotta come out. Oh, so it's funny. Oh, so you're gonna do it. I, okay, all right. Everything I left had left from the first round, I put it into him the second time. <laughs> And when I, when I got up, I told him, I said, your quarterback trying to get you hurt. <laughs> oh, you better tell him to run that ball this way. <laughs> Don't come up here. That's all we went back to her. He's like, hey, man, let's, let's run something else. See, the truth is, I didn't have nothing left no way. Right. Oh, God. <laughs>
So when I lift my hands, I'm surrendering to him. I'm crying out to him. I'm, I'm blessing his name. I'm giving and receiving from God with my hands raised. But, but when I choose to keep my hands down, I'm not giving and I'm not receiving. Sometimes I raise my hand to like, oh Lord, let it be unto me. And 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 if praise is authentic in our life, it should happen when we're not in service. Amen. Amen. It should happen when we're walking down the street. It should happen in the kitchen. It should happen in the laundromat. It should happen in the park. Whenever you feel such an unction, your hands should go up because this is a form of glorifying God as often as you do it. So you don't have to wait until somebody says, lift your hand. Can I go deeper? Sometimes we have commercialized the lifting of our hands so it becomes a part of a demonstration and not a form of worship. It's like being at a concert and they say, wave your hands in the air. Yeah. And wave them like you just don't care. Uh -huh. And even though you just waved them five minutes ago, you wave them again. Yeah. Because whoever's doing the concert say, wave your hands. You don't see the person just randomly in the crowd waving the hand. But when they say, wave your hands, we respond. Yeah. Wave it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so when we're in this place, that form of praise should come out in our lives spontaneously, unprovoked, just because he's worthy. Sometimes when you're hurting, when you're going through, sometimes you need to lift your hands. Sometimes when you're struggling, what you really need to do is lift your hands. Not, not, not what you say, curl and cry. But I need to lift my hands. I don't have no strength, God. I'm not, I don't have enough. Yeah, yeah. See, so, so if I'm not doing these things, guess what? I'm not getting this in my diet. Right. That's good. So I, I don't have enough time where I'm telling God I surrender. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough time where I tell God I'm not strong enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not weak enough. Heal me. Strengthen me. Heal me. Yeah. Deliver me. All of that is coming in, but I'm offering him all that I have. And, and if I'm not doing that enough, then I'm not getting the connection so that I can receive what God is pouring out in my life. Because guess what God won't do? Force you to get it. You don't want it, don't lift your hands up. I ain't going to make you take it. But if you lift your hands up, I'll feed you. Haven't you been in that service when you finally lift your hands and you feel breakthrough? You feel the power of God? That's not by coincidence. That's not how good the person is singing. That's because you finally got in a position yeah. to receive from God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now it's authentic in your worship experience, not just a response to the person right. on stage. Right. Do you respond to the person on stage? Yes. If you respond at the concert, respond in the service. Right. Yes. All right. If you respond at the baseball game, respond in the service. Right. Amen. 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 But you're giving God the praise. Mm. Barack, like Obama. <laughs> That's how I spell. B A R A K. Barack. Wow. Barack is a quiet voice. A quiet voice. It's your whisper time. It's your it's your soft pillow time. You might have your hands raised and Barack at the same time. So I might have my hands raised and be saying, oh, you see what I'm saying? Or even just silently. Be, be internally rehearsing what's going on while your hands are raised. Yeah, but question. Is, is it Different type of prayer. Yeah. So, the 
Barak would be praying without speaking. It's a quiet word. It would be, it would be not audibly saying what you're saying out loud that everybody else could hear. It could be internal. It could be soft. It could be a whisper. It could be a mumble. It could be a cry. Because you see people do this and stuff. Right. I'm like, that's not praying, I ain't saying that. But it is. But it is. But it is. But it's, but it's a different posture. You see what I'm saying? And 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 we're gonna have a segment on this on prayer. Okay. Good. So I'm not gonna do too much smaller, but I will say it's a different posture of prayer. So when I pray like that, I'm praying different. When I when you pray, your prayer has an objective. When you're when you're doing praise and worship. Uh, you might be the worship leader. Your praise has an objective. The, the style of praise, so when I say lift your hands, mm -hmm. that, that has a different objective than clap your hands. All right. okay. when, I, when I tell you to clap your hands, I'm trying to solicit a different type of response right. than when I say lift your hands. Right. Amen. When I say bow your head, I'm, I'm asking you to do something different yeah. than when I say shout unto God. Right. You see what I'm saying? When I was doing visualization, that was doing something different than when I was beating on the shoulder pad. Right. It's a different stage in that process. Does that make sense? Yeah. So make sure you remember that question if I don't address it specifically. But yes. So Barack is that, that quiet voice. It's in a kneel. It's literally in the bow that you just mentioned, uh, Ned. It's, it's humility. It's submission. You know what one of the most effective communication tools that there is that most of us underutilize? Shut up. Mm. <laughs> what, what most of us are very bad at is being quiet. Amen. Amen. We're, we're uncomfortable <laughs> with quiet. Do you hear people say the deafening silence? <laughs> When, it, when it's just quiet, it's too loud. And, and, and somebody gonna make a noise. Uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just came out and just be quiet, you know? Tell a room full of children, just be quiet. They will start giggling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, you know we used to play a game, who can be quiet the longest? You know? And then somebody goes, they not just losing the game, they can't help it. <laughs> it's, it's like it's uncomfortable to just be quiet. Somebody gotta make a noise. Right? Knock something over, do something. But if I just said, come to church and sit here and be quiet, we could sit here and be quiet and have a worship service that was out of your mind. In silence. Just here. 
spending that kind of time being quiet, being still. Stop moving. Don't, don't, don't text. Don't Facebook. Some people say, I, I'm talking to God all the time. Man, please. Hmm. But are you listening to God all the time? Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. Is that, is that, does God have any dedicated time where he has your undivided attention and you're not going to say anything? You're not going to ask for nothing. You're not going to say nothing. You're not going to say nothing. You're not going to make no prayer requests. You're just going to sit there and be quiet. So you take that home. That's for you. I got one for free. What's his name? Barack. That's right. That's right. I, I believe I'm saying this one, next one correctly. Halal. 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 H A L A L. Hello. Hello. H A L A L. This is what we Pentecostal folks like to do. This is your soul rejoicing in a dance, in uh, the clapping of our hands beating the tambourine. Make noise. It's, this is make a joyful noise. Howl. Run. No, I mean literally. Holler. <laughs> Run. Jump. Stomp. You know, rumble. Holler, holler unto God. Not holler. I'm going to holler. Scream. Yell. Right? And they said, come on and make some noise in this place. Yeah. Ha ha. Got it? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What is it? I don't need no music. All I need is the Holy Ghost. Dance, dance, dance all night. Ha ha. Right? Then they break out and run. Ha ha. It's, it's a, a, a exuberant exclamation of praise. At least the opposite of Barak. If Barak may be quiet and still, Halal is the opposite of that. Make noise, joke. Make a lot of noise. Make it loud. Right? What did you say? The whole verse. Amen. Zamar. Z A M A R. Zamar. And that's play for him a song. I didn't say sing a song. Okay. I said play a song. And I didn't mean your playlist on your phone. Oh, really? It might, we might get away for a truck. <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we might get away with it, but play for him a song. So how do you play for him a song without the radio? On an instrument. Everybody play up instrument. No. Yeah, I don't. no, I don't. Everybody can play. Well, I can play the tambourine. <laughs> you play an instrument. <laughs> Everybody can play an uh, instrument. Doesn't matter how it's sound, right? Doesn't matter how it's sound. <laughs> oh, oh. It's joyful. Everybody can yeah. play an uh, instrument. You can play an uh, instrument can be blocks. Yeah. You can take no blocks. Wooden blocks. Or a spoon and a pan. A spoon and a pan. <laughs> old, old country church. That was the instrument. Yeah. A washboard. Right here. I was amazing with the blowing in the fan as a kid. Up there. Yeah. Playing play in the blowing in the fan. Playing 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 that thing they it was, was a washboard. Yeah. That was a washboard. Yeah. It was yeah. like a washboard. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, it, it, you know, so you can make. We didn't say you have to be a, a symphony orchestra musician. Right. Okay. But you're playing on you know, a song. Okay. So right. so your blocks, clock, 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 whatever rhythm that you do in the blocks mm -hmm. is is playing in a song. Because when you're clocking the, the blocks, you're still hearing something. You're hearing a rhythm in your mind and in your heart. 
When you eat tamarind, you're doing that. When you blow the horn, you're doing that. When you play the piano, when we were in uh, Carolina, uh, Apostle Salton led us in worship on the, on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. She was playing the keyboard. Wow. Uh, and and, and in, in two minutes, uh, Apostle Sims had taught her how to play the keyboard. Wow. And, and, and the whole service went berserk <laughs> while she was playing the keyboard. Wow. It sounded very Bishop Rice. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> but it worked. Yes. It wasn't in the. Right. She was just playing chords. Mm -hmm. yeah. This chord. And then go to this chord. Yeah. And then they went back to this chord. And then go to this third chord. Mm -hmm. And she was banging them. Blue. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> but but it worked and, and it, it took us to a place where we were like, oh praise God. Right. Yeah. Oh, glory. <laughs> and, and so she was leading us in worship even though she was mechanically just playing the tune. Yeah. We deny, yes ma'am, we deny the ability to do stuff because we're not skilled at it, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. You can just play this one chord over and over again yeah. and it still does the job. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So isn't our voice considered an instrument, or is this particular word only for something outside of self? Both are true. Our voice is an instrument, and this word is about playing a physical instrument, playing something tangible. Okay. Play, praise him on the high sounding center. Mm -hmm. Praise him with the timbre. Right? This is this is this is physical instrument that we're saying. Everybody can play a cymbal. They can stick and beat it. Bosh! What is a cymbal? The thing on the drum, right? Ah, uh, okay. Take the stick and beat it. Uh, Bosh! Take two of them and burn them together. Bam! Okay. Everybody can do that. Okay. Unless you just don't have hands. Right. Then you just kick the cymbal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you can do it, okay? Uh, Tahila. T E H I L A H. Tahila. Kind of like Talia, but Tahila. Tahila. T E H I L A H. Is, is what Cheryl said. It's the same. Same. It's praising him with your voice, singing a song. It could be the song you know. It could be the song you make up. It could be your random words coming together and becoming a song. You hear sometimes people are in, in service and they just start saying stuff. Hallelujah, Jesus, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. And they're doing that. Thank you. Okay? You may or may not pay for that style of worship. You may rather have a little more Kirk Franklin in your team. <laughs> right? But but neither one is wrong. Neither one is wrong. It's just a healer. You, your, your healer might be country. Your healer might be Latin. Your healer might be uh, urban. But it's still the healer. Make sense? Yeah. What if I don't sound good? Yeah. What if I don't sing good? Is it still the healer? Should I do that or go back to the blocks? Yeah, it's still the healer. It sounds good to God, should have said Yeah, I bet it do. Even though, even though I don't have a good voice. Y'all yeah. agree? Yeah. I think it's bad. He couldn't sing, but he get up there all the time. And one day he sang, boy, he sounded good. To you? It sounded good for real. Because to you? other times it wasn't. Yeah, okay, I'll say that. It sounded good to you that time. All right, I'll the say that. The question is, on those other times, did it sound good to God? 
I'm in it deep. You feel me? Make me happy. Here's what happens. We think, we're thinking of our skill. God is thinking of our heart. Our heart. It, it might sound even better when you know you can't sing. <laughs> and you sing. Right. It's not more entertaining. But it's a better offering to yes. God. Yes. Because God knows that you're not singing because you're cold and right. you like to hear yourself make right. run. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And stop and say, yo, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, you just think you're flexing your musical talent. Right. And musical talent is not necessarily praise. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. You can be musically talented and sing gospel songs and be an atheist. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not praise. Yeah. And praise is something that happens in your heart. It happens in my heart. It came out of my mouth. It came out of my hands. It came out of my feet. But it happened in my heart. So to God, what, what we're missing is that we're trying to listen to see are we entertained. And God is measuring our offering. Okay. What God is looking at is saying, I don't care what it sounds like. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you all I have. And if you put all of us, excuse me, if you put all of us together, in a bad key, then all of a sudden it sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. When you hear all of that, hey, I'm in the wrong key. You know, <laughs> you put all of us together in that sound, the, 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 what the total thing coming together becomes an aroma. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? She can't all out. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll say that later. Because sometimes the sounds is not on the key that you think, and, you know, right. it's, it's not entertaining. But we give you all the energy. Amen. We give you all of our praise. The, our heart is empty yes. in this sound. Yes. And the sound might be hideous mm -hmm. from an entertaining God. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's where we have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're really being entertained in a place where we're, we're worshiping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all hear me say yeah. uh, Sometimes we're we're really being entertained in a place where we think we're worshiping. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. right. And we're waiting to be entertained. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes we praise God, quote unquote, in response to the entertainment. Yes. Not in response to God. That's good. Whether my knees get up here and sing or I get up here and sing, God is still good. Yes, yes. 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 So the praise that I should be giving God should not be based upon how well she sings the song. That's right. But sometimes we're waiting, and if she sings the song well, then we clap. Okay, guess who I'm giving the worship to? To my knees. We say, ooh, Juanita, you are good. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and William get up to sing our duet. <laughs> and nobody will clap. Y'all might. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when we stop, then they go clap. <laughs> they'll say, whoa, thank the Lord. <laughs> Don't sing no more, please. That's it. That's it. God love you. Because, because, because we might not be as entertaining. And, and, and in many cases, church has become entertaining. And, and we have bought into it. And I'm not judging us for it, but it's what happens. It's, it's the reason why churches pay to hire a band and to hire a praise team. So that really we're having a concert experience every, every Sunday. So I don't like if like I have been to church and some people say and I just don't don't give it up. I like it. 
Yeah. They can't sing. And so I'm not up there. They're not very entertaining. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, what are they doing? This sounds horrible. And right. I don't know the song, but I'm like, oh, please get through. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And because we're gifted in different areas. But but we should not be prohibited. My praise should not be prohibited because I'm not the most talented singer. You see what I'm saying? And 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 but but in that situation, maybe you might be a better usher. And don't sing. Right. You know, maybe you should be on the deacon board. You see what I mean? Or whatever. I tried to see when I was in church and I knew I couldn't. So, and especially when the girl just want me to get out of there. I tell her, oh, I can't get out of there in the AC, and you tell me just move my lips. Right. I'm saying, so I'll be getting the usher. I'm good right. at that. That's good. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. 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 And God is blessed by that, right? By right. our service. Right. But, but even if I'm the usher that can't sing, I should still make the joyful noise into the Lord. Amen. 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 And I'm not, And I'm not doing that for entertainment. Amen. Number two, I should also make that same type of joyful noise when I'm at home. Right. Okay. I should make that same type of joyful noise in the park, in the kitchen. See, I'm not only worshiping and praising God in the corporate worship service. This is to be a part of our lives. So I should break. I should break out in song as I'm driving down the street because God is good. I should lift my hands not while I'm driving. But, but another time, right? I should do that. I should allow, and then I should grow up. And I should do all those things throughout the course of my day because if I'm in fact talking to God all the time, then this is going to be a part of my experience. There's going to be a time where I'm in the presence of God, I'm just going to shut up. Let all the earth go silent before Him. There's a time I'm just going to be quiet. There's a time where I'm going to scream. There's going to be a time where I'm going to dance. All of that, I'm going to, all of that's going to erupt out of me in the presence of the Lord because He is God. Amen. And worthy of my praise. Amen. Last one. Anybody want to guess it? Shabbat. Shabbat. I know it. How are we going to ask about this? Shabbat. S H A B A C H. Shabbat means to shout for joy. To shout for joy, loudly, triumphant, as if the victory is in our hand and we won. So, like when I hit the board and I screamed and did all that, that's a Shabbat. Ah! When you when you see the when you see the uh, uh, what the Braveheart movie. And then they beat the beat the shields and they scream. Mm -hmm. That's that's a that's a shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Okay. So we're shouting as though we have won. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're giving God a, a, a shout of victory. You see what I mean? See now that's what I thought sacrificial praise. Right? Well that's why I thought the class. Yeah, I'm so oh. glad. <laughs> Amen. No, it's it's actually it's 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 a victorious cry. The sacrifice comes in when I give God a victorious cry when I don't feel victorious. When I when I feel like you know I'm losing, and instead I give God a shout of victory. Now now I'm doing something by faith. I'm I'm, I'm telling my soul how to feel in this situation. My soul wants to be sad and depressed and cry, but I'm telling my soul instead, make a joyful noise unto God. And shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I'm telling you, I, I might have to holler. Throw up both my hands. It's soul management. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will say of my soul, I'm telling my soul what to do, what to feel, what to think.
My soul is not running my body. I'm telling my soul, you're going to lift your hands. When God said, as long as Moses' hands were lifted, they were running the back. And then when his hands got tired, God sent him help. Hey! That was Shabbat. Amen. God sent him help to help him hold up his hands. Sometimes, sometimes you need to be helped from somebody. Yes. Sometimes somebody holding their hands and they might be weary. You got to help them hold up their hands so they can get the victory. Hold their hands up until the Shabbat comes. Yes. Yes. Worship leaders. Worship leaders. Stop yelling at people and telling them to worship. And lead them. Right, that's right, right, that's right. In prayer. Right. Yeah. Dance until I get happy. Right. Yeah. Lift your hands in the sanctuary right. and bless the Lord. Yes. <laughs> if we are what we say we are, it's going to catch up. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. It's going to catch in us. Yeah. Sing the song. We used to, we used to sing Dr. Watts. And somebody just sing the song. Right. And everybody else, yes, and everybody else knows that what we're supposed to do is sing the song yes. too. Yes. And that, so what we do is we come right on in with you yes. and sing the song. Yes. We know how to get in agreement with a yes, Lord, praise. Yes. And lift our hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes. And say, yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, do it right now. Lift your yes, hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Come on, I feel it right now. Lift your yes, hands Lord. and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord, until yes, you feel Lord. If you're at home, yes, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands in the bedroom and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lift Lord. your hands in the living room and say, oh, thank you, God. Yes, Lift Lord. your hands yes. and say, yes, Lord. 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 You can't see it. You can't see it, but I put my hands down. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Some people's hands stayed up. Yes, yes, yes. Because once I get you a fire, you don't need me to tell you to fire. You have to tell me that all I got to do is get my mind shifted. So when we come to corporate worship, we're leading people to shift their minds. That's perhaps when you when you when you open up when we do our devotion and when we do our praise and worship, it's not time to check them because they're not there. Right. It's the time to lead them yes. to that place. Yes. Yes. So you come on fire. Yes. Yes. So you can set me on fire. Yes. Yes. Amen. Not criticize me for not being on fire. Yes. Right? Burn until I want to burn. Yes. 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 In, in, in Hawaii, in Hawaii, the, the, in Maui, there was a terrible wildfire. But if I can use the wildfire as a, a, a measure of worship, what happened that caused the wildfire was one spark. I'm going to check some folks, CC, that be talking about the dead churches. And is that enough? Because it's not the dead church that's the problem. Mm. It's that there's no spark. All right. All right. All right. All right. In, 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 in Maui, they had one spark. That spark caught the dead trees on fire. Mm. Yeah, wow. And the second thing that happened was hurricane wind came. Yeah. And it blew the fire across everything else that was dead. Yeah, yeah. And in moments, everything that was dead was on fire. All we needed was a spark and a strong wind. My God. And the day of Pentecost was fully come. Yeah. All right. Amen. Yeah. They were all in one place, one mind, one yeah. accord. Yeah. They're dead. And then the Holy Ghost came and lit upon them uh -huh. yeah. like a mighty burning fire. Uh -huh. And it came like a mighty 
Brushes me. It's a fascinating concept. All God needs is a spark and a little wind. Yeah. And, and it'll blow over and set everything in the house. Yeah. And everyone that was in the room spoke with tongues. And everyone that was in the room prophesied. And everyone that was in the room gave glory unto God. Yeah. Nobody, nobody didn't feel like it. Nobody hands was hurt. Right, right. Nobody feet was hurt. Nobody thought we had been in church too long. Because all we needed was a spark. Yeah. And the light rushing away. Yeah. 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 So, so maybe if you're in a place and you don't see that happening, the problem is, is that you're not sparking. Mm. Oh my God. Right. Amen. That's That's good. Good. Yeah. That's good. Maybe you need to go and set yourself on fire. Yeah. Mm. Then when you set yourself on fire, when you get in a dead church, it should really burn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, uh, ran into God, and God asked him a question. He said, can these bones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how he said that? Can, can these dry bones live? Right. Mm -hmm. They did. They were very dead. They were very dry. Very dry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The scripture said, and they were very dry. Yeah. Equally saying, they were very dead. Yeah. And then God asked the spark, yeah. "Can they live?" Mm -hmm. And then God did not give Ezekiel the supernatural power of regenerating flesh. No. No. God did not give Ezekiel uh, wax to build out the bodies and, and make them. He didn't give them AEDs so that he could give them CPR and shock them back to life. God said, prophesy unto them. It doesn't matter if they're very dry. Prophesy unto them. And see, sometimes you can be looking at dead stuff and you can say, I'm not, I'm not able to preach here. I'm not able to praise here. I'm not able to worship here because this church is dead. But the problem is not the church. The problem is the spark. <laughs> when Ezekiel prophesied, it said, and the sinews and the flesh began to come out. And, and, and it came and it reformed. It formed with along in agreement with the prophecy. Yeah. But if there's no spark, nothing will come alive. So whether you preaching, whether you are a praise and worship leader, whether you raise an offering, make sure you on fire before you criticize everything else for being dead. Hallelujah. We the, we the people of God, and especially those of us that are in corporate ministry leadership, our job is to be that spark. Our job is to be that inspiration in the lives of people, wherever you go. You should be the walking revival. If that, if that TV show was the walking dead, you should be the walking revival. Wherever, wherever you go, you should impact the community around you. There's no place I go where I let people stay sad. Mm. Yeah. I'm in here, you gonna smile. Yeah. You, you, got, you mess around and you gonna tell God thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make sure you do it. I'm gonna get on your nerves trying. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I ain't gonna just walk by and say, oh, it looks like me out that. I walked through the grocery store this morning. I walked by and stopped the lady that was shopping the shelves. I said, Psst, you're not smiling. <laughs> She said, what? I said, you're not smiling. You know what she did? Laugh. <laughs> you know what she said after that? Amen. <laughs> she said, you have a blessed day. Wow. I didn't say I'm a pastor candidate. Right. I'm a lawyer. All I needed to do was smile. And, and you know, she, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, she might have thought about that fat boy walk through the store. And, 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 and laugh again. Yeah. 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 Because we should have that kind of impact on people's lives. Right. Now watch this. As I close, watch this. No matter what you do, 
you're impacting the lives of people. Right? If you frown, you're impacting the people. If you praise God, you're impacting the people. If you sing, you're impacting the people. If you lift your hands, it doesn't matter what you do. Your people are people are being directly affected by what you do. You are God's instrument. And you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice to be used by God. Because you're going to be used by something. In this situation right now, I, I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with, but look, I'd rather give God praise. Amen. I could just sit here and suck my thumb, or I could shout. Amen. Don't go nowhere where you don't get shot, get shot or nothing, but what, what if you just shouted until somebody looked at you and just say, God has been that good? Mm. Yeah, right. yeah. What, if, what if you gave God a Shabbat in the parking lot? Yeah. And when everybody turned around and looked and just say, I just have to tell them thank you. Yeah. 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 For what? I'm breathing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. 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 it's shifted. It's yeah. shifted. Yeah. Yeah. It's shifted. Yeah. You have flash mobs. And when flash mobs break out and do a flash mob break, after a while, everybody's right. Everybody. 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 We don't know the routine, but we copy. Yeah. Right. You should be a walking flash mob. Yeah. And what the enemy wants to do is keep you in the toilet so deep That's right. that instead of glorifying God in that moment, you find something negative to talk about. Mm -hmm. You choose to have an attitude. You say, I just don't feel like being bothered. You go into those places. You depress. You all say, I'm not saying that what we're dealing with is not real. But how we respond gives God glory. We preached when the Job, uh, Job said, though he slept. We preached when he said, the Lord giveth him, Lord. You know why? Because that's special. We recognize what he's going through, and he still can give God praise. Yes. Then we have to check ourselves and say, well, what about me? Right. How many worms I got crawling in and out of me? How many dogs are licking my wounds? Yes. And how, many of, how many of my cattle burned up today? Yeah. How many of my house burned down? Is there any reason why I should be praising God right now? And if no other reason, I have breath. Yes. If, we, if we do that, it shifts our whole thing. Yes. Even on a bad day, I can choose to think about the bad day I'm having, or I can think about breath. Right. Right. I have to tell my bad day, hold on, hold on, while I praise God for breath. Yes. Yes. That's where we gotta get to. That's that's what we're that's what we're training ourselves to do with these forms of prayer. Sometimes you just gotta realize I haven't I haven't lifted my hands today. I have on my calendar to take take time out to kneel and pray. Yeah. I have on my calendar to take time out to stop and read. Because my day would go on and I might let the whole day go and I don't stop and, and, and do it. Yeah. That's true. So there's nothing wrong with that. Because when I stop, I'm saying to God, God, you are worth stopping. Yeah. 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 Even if the phone had to remind me to stop. Right. One time I was in the bed and I said, oh, oh, wait a minute, let me get back out the bed and get this knee in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just to take time. Mm -hmm. Just to tell God you're worth it. Yeah, you're worth the details in my life. When we do that, we give God a praise in a way that we show him out of all the areas of our life, with our clapping, with our voice, with our song, with our musical instruments, with our exclamation, with our Shabbat, with our quiet time, we show God glory and we give him uh, that number one space in our lives in every part of our day and in every way that we can. That's what we're doing when we give God praise. That's our devotion unto him. Come on and give God a hand of praise.